Real quick, before we get started, head over to Library. Uh, it's a free and open source alternative to YouTube. There's a link in the description. Uh, it's just a better experience, and it's better for your favorite creators to watch their videos over there. Check it out. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite Command & Conquer fan, Gardner. I have been a fan of Command & Conquer for as long as I can remember. I have very fond memories of seeing Command & Conquer for the first time. That unique perspective I had never seen before in a video game. Looking down on a battlefield and seeing these like little characters that you could control and move around the map, you could build bases, you could attack and defend. It was it was a game-changing moment for me, pun intended. It's not a pun, it's a play on words. <laughs> And it stuck with me throughout my childhood. I, I remember playing uh, Command & Conquer with my best friend, Carl. He lived right up the hill from me. And uh, I would run out the back door and I would yell, I'm going to call you in 10 seconds, dude. And then I'd run to my computer counting the whole time. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. And then I'd get to my computer and I'd punch in his number and then hit dial in the game. And my modem would call his modem and then he'd click the answer button in the game. And then we would play Red Alert against each other competitively. And it was an absolute blast. We did that so many times when we were kids and it drove our parents crazy. <laughs> they couldn't make phone calls back then. That's how long ago this was. This was before you had ubiquitous always online internet dial up this wasn't even this was like dial into this was not even like dial up internet i would call his computer <laughs> and then there's this other time where i convinced my cousin to uh, install some custom rules that i wrote for the game and uh we started playing and i ended up building uh, a bunch of tanyas like a whole uh, army of Tanya's and I just attacked his base with this clone army uh, demolishing all his buildings and one-shotting all of his units as they would exit the base uh, his reaction was absolutely priceless <gasps> Squidward that's cheating and you know uh, the the very first instance of coding that I ever experienced was editing rules.ini Command and Conquer made me feel like a hacker when I was eight years old. <laughs> I gave engineers grenades in Red Alert. I gave Tiberium Fiends electromagnetic pulses <laughs> in Tiberian Sun. I made chimps buildable units uh, in Red Alert 2 and gave them Tesla coil attacks. It was awesome. I mean, beyond having fun and piquing my interest in programming, it also proved to me that I didn't need like a college degree or even to be an adult in order to program and make the computer do what I wanted. So it should be no surprise that since basically its inception, I've been a huge proponent of OpenRA. I mean, I feel as though I've been playing it for 10 years at this point. I remember when you had to install uh, NVIDIA CG Toolkit from Ubuntu's repositories in order to get the game to work on Ubuntu. I mean, this is like a long time ago. So then you can imagine my shock and, and surprise when all of a sudden, uh, there was a post by Jim Vasella, an, an electronic arts executive, on OpenRA's blog. I was I was afraid that EA was about to rain down legal hellfire upon OpenRA, my favorite open source video game. But that wasn't it at all. In fact, Jim Turn, that's his online handle, uh, has really proven that my skepticism was misplaced. Uh, in the blog post, he announced that there was an HD remaster of the original Command & Conquer and uh, CNC Red Alert. And uh, that was really awesome. That was, that was super exciting. <laughs> and while I was skeptical, I have to say that my boy Jim really has delivered in spades. And then he goes and says this yesterday as of the time of recording. Today, we are proud to announce that alongside the launch of the remastered collection, Electronic Arts will be releasing the Tiberium Dawn.dll and Red Alert.dll and their corresponding source code under the GPL version 3 license. Do you guys see the goosebumps right now? I am like literally, like, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got real goosebumps. I've read this eight times and I still get goosebumps every time. This is a key moment for Electronic Arts the CNC community, and the gaming industry, as we believe this will be one of the first major RTS franchises to open source their source code under the GPL. No, 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 no. Don't undersell yourself here, Jim. Uh, this is one of the largest uh, open source efforts in AAA video games. Just thinking off the top of my head, we got 
Doom. Doom is open source. Uh, and at the time of its open sourcing, I'm pretty sure that id was an independent studio. And then we have Quake, which again was id and John Carmack. Then in 2008, Electronic Arts actually released the source code for the original Sin City, um, which, you know, there's precedent for that happening from Electronic Arts. One precedent, I guess. But it was also 13 years ago. <laughs> and then finally, you have Doom 3, which again was id. Now, I can't think of any other major instances of old video games going open source, especially under the GPL. If you can think of some, let me know down in the comments. I, I might have forgot one or two. But with all that being said, this is a pretty rare thing for the video game industry. I've talked about this multiple times on the channel. I think that video games should be released under the GPL after a couple years of being on the market. I think that it just makes a lot of sense. If you're a game developer and you love your game and you want people to play it, open source it. If you build up a community around it, your game will have legs for decades upon decades. Uh, but Carmack should really take a lesson from his past self in open source Oculus, don't you think? Anyway, the announcement from Jim Turn goes on to say, uh, it's worth noting that this initiative is the direct result of a collaboration between some of the community council members and our teams at EA. After discussing with the council members, we made the decision to go with the GPL license to ensure compatibility with projects like CNCNet and OpenRA. Our goal was to deliver the source code in a way that would be truly beneficial for the community, and we hope this will enable amazing community projects for years to come. And uh, boy, I, this just fills my body with the spirit of God. I mean, this is just amazing. It feels so good to see a company like Electronic Arts, who I have a, a rather uh, distrustful relationship with, do something this cool, right? And who knows, maybe this is the start of a new trend. Uh, maybe, I, you know, we can always hope. I'd love to see old franchises get reinvigorated with their their original releases having uh, new life breathed into them. I mean, imagine what The Sims 1 would be like if it got released into uh, open source. Imagine uh, SimCity 2000 or 3000 or even SimCity 4, which was my favorite. And maybe, just maybe, if uh, there happens to be a Tiberium Sun and Red Alert 2 remaster down the road, you could uh, release the source code to Tiberium Sun. Because that's my favorite uh, Command & Conquer game. Could you do that for me, Jim? Please? Please? But anyway, this news was unexpected, but so very welcome, and I am completely uh, enthralled. This is just an amazing thing that you guys are doing over at uh, Command, uh, Command & Conquer Headquarters, Electronic Arts. I didn't think I would have news in 2020 that made me think very positively of Electronic Arts. I'd love to know what you guys think about this. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, hit me up down there. I'd love to hear you guys. I want to thank all my guys over on Patreon. Uh, you guys are truly awesome. You are helping me through this incredibly uncertain time. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do this without you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing here, consider supporting the show over on Patreon. It makes a world of difference. I think that's gonna do it for this video. Hit that like button, share this video with your friends. If you're on library, hit that follow button and repost. Those are the buttons on library. But uh, that's gonna do it for now. Have a blessed day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.